Love, grace, and peace to you all. I hope you're having a blessed day. I hope you've had a blessed day or a blessed night. I don't care where you are on this depressing earth. I hope you're having a good day today. Did you know that there's a difference between believing in Christ and believing on Christ? There's a huge difference there. So all the religions of this world, all the Christians, they believe in Christ. They believe in him, but they do not believe on him. They believe that they have to achieve salvation based upon their works or their free will or their faith. They do not believe on him. They believe in him. Just as the demons and Satan, they believe in him too. They believe that he exists. They believe that he died and that he was roused. Yet they're not believers. Do you know why? Because they don't believe on him. All the Christians or the majority of the Christians, they believe in him. They believe in Christ, but they do not believe on Christ. They attribute salvation to themselves. They say that salvation is an offer that you have to receive, that you have to receive Christ into your heart and then you are saved. They reject the cross of Christ, which is the salvation of all of humanity through grace. It's a done deal. It's an accomplishment that happened 2,000 years ago. That is the good news of your salvation, that you have been saved 2,000 years ago. It had nothing to do with you. Those who believe in this, that salvation for grace through faith, not our faith, but his faith, this puts you in the body of Christ. Belief in the death and turn and resurrection of Jesus Christ for every single sin, my sins and your sins. Believing on him is different than believing in him. James says that you are believing that God is one or that God exists or that Christ exists. Ideally are you doing. The demons are also believing this and are shuddering. So the demons and Satan and the fallen ones, they believe in Christ. They believe that he is the Son of God and the Messiah, although they reject him and they want to fight against him and things like this. They believe in him too. And all you Christians out there who attribute your own salvation to yourselves, they say that you have to be born again or baptized or you have to say the sinner's prayer or you have to believe to be saved or it's your faith or it's your free will choice that saved you or you have to be underneath the law of Moses, or it doesn't matter. If you, if you believe that salvation comes from yourself, it comes out of you, you believe in Christ, you do not believe on Christ. A believer believes on him because they realize that he saved them, that he saved us all the way back at the cross. That's what has saved us, past tense. Salvation is not an offer. Salvation is a declaration. Good news. Have you heard the good news of your salvation that happened all those years ago at the cross of Christ? That Jesus Christ died for my sins and for your sins and for all of sin, including the sin of unbelief? That he was entombed in the three days he was roused by the one true God? This is the guarantee that all of humanity has been saved at the cross. Salvation has been accomplished for everyone. And eventually every single person will come in to the salvation that Jesus Christ accomplished for them. At the cross, this is the guarantee. He was roused by the one true God. You cannot change it. If you believe in this, in this truth, you believe on him, not in him. You believe on Christ and his work, which you cannot add from. You cannot add to it. You cannot take away from the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. If you believe that you can add to the cross of Christ, or if you believe that you can subtract from the cross of Christ, you are not a believer. You are a feigned believer. You believe that it's your faith that saves you. You believe that it's not the grace of God for the faith of Christ that has already saved us. Past tense, you believe that salvation comes from you. You believe in him just as the demons and Satan do. You do not believe on him though. Paul says in, in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 to 9, For in grace, which is not deserved, we don't deserve this, it's completely free from God's grace, through faith, which is the faith of Christ, are you saved? Salvation is not an offer, it's a declaration. And it's completely free through the grace of God for the faith of his Son. And if you believe in this, if you believe on him, you're granted the faith to believe in this. So even faith does not come out of you. And this is not out of you. Salvation is not out of you. It's not your free will choice. It's not you accepting him into your heart that has saved you. It's Jesus Christ dying for your sins, being entombed and roused, that has saved you. If you believe that you have to add something to salvation to seal the deal, you believe in him. 
what I'm saying and what Paul is saying is that you have been saved. And if you believe in this, because God granted you the faith to believe in it, you believe on him. I believe on him. He saved me. I don't save myself. How can I lose salvation that I did not earn? He has saved me. He saved you too. And it doesn't matter if you don't believe in it. It's true. And you will come into a realization of the truth if you like it or not. It's God's plan. So, for in grace through faith are you saved. And this is not out of you. It is out of God through his Son. It is God's gift, not of works. Approach present, not of works. Not of your free will choice, not of obeying the law, not of keeping the Sabbaths, not of circumcising or going to church or being baptized or being born again or accepting them into your heart. No, it is not of works. It is not out of you. It is for in grace, the grace of God, for the faith of Jesus Christ that has saved us, lest you should be boasting. And if it was out of your free will, or it was out of your works, or your attempts at keeping the law, or of your faith, or of your ability to make the right decision to believe in Christ, then you can boast in that decision. We can't make a decision for salvation. We can't save ourselves. We are wicked. We are sinners. How can we make a good decision? This is why God sent his only begotten son to save us, and he accomplished that on the cross. If you believe in this, you have been granted the faith to believe it, to believe on him instead of believing in him, like the demons or Satan and the majority of Christians out there. You do not believe on him, you believe in him. For his achievement are we, we are God's achievement, being created in Christ for good works, which God has made beforehand, that we should be walking in them. All the good works that you do has been pre-planned by God. And if it was the situation where we, we had to make a decision to be saved, that would be God's prerogative. He would have pre-planned that. <laughs> he pre-planned the salvation of all of humanity and he's already accomplished that because Jesus Christ died for your sins on the cross. If you believe that he has saved you, apart from your works, apart from your acts, apart from your faith or your free will, which you don't have, then you believe on him. If you believe in something else, that you believe that salvation is out of you, if you believe that you have to believe to be saved, that it's your faith that saves you, you do not believe on him, you believe in him. You are in amongst Christian religion, which teaches you that salvation comes out of you. Yet Paul says, this is not out of you. Plain words, it is for in grace through faith are you saved. So all the religions of this world will teach us to believe in him and accept his offer, his offer, of salvation. Paul tells us the evangel of our salvation that has happened in the past, which is Christ's death and tomb and resurrection for all of our sins, for all of sin once for all time. Salvation is not an offer. It's a declaration. Do you believe in this? Then you believe on Christ instead of believing in Christ.